seeing, sitting there in the jury box looking at Jack Ruby every day, did you feel like you were looking at an innocent, innocent man who got caught up in, under uh, intense circumstances, or did you think he was guilty? No, I, I didn't think that he was guilty or innocent. I, I uh, hadn't reached that point. Uh, I had no reason to believe really legally that he was either one. I was trying to keep my mind open for, for the evidence. But uh, I, I felt very sorry for Jack Ruby. He, he, uh, he looked uh, alone. He looked forlorn. Uh, he just really looked pitiful. He never said anything, never smiled. Uh, I made eye-to-eye -eye contact with him once or twice, is all because he just, he was, he was in another world, seemed like, all the time. I know that one time, uh, the district attorney, the assistant district attorney, <coughs> excuse me, who, who worked with uh, Henry Wade, uh, he was, uh, he and the, uh, and the other team, they were very, they were sharply critical of, of Jack Ruby because uh, they would malign him, they would, uh, they would uh, 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 almost heckle him because uh, they called him the village idiot and all kinds of names uh, in court. And uh, this district attorney, I heard him say, say something about uh, him, that Jack Ruby was just sitting there, he said, doesn't he remind you of, of looking into to the eyes of a crab? And I thought, that's an awful thing to, t to say, but then I looked at him and I thought, well, he does look like a crab. <laughs> you know, his eyes were, were, were sort of fixed uh, and uh, had, a, had a vacant stare, I guess you'd say, and he, and he looked like he was feeling his way through the world. And I really felt sorry for him. I just warned him to say something and apologize and and say I'm sorry and let's all go home and I would have gone with it. But uh, it didn't work that way.